yeah found and all is okay just send me the link okay hello all of you good afternoon all dear students of debenture sorry and even uh, i'll be giving you the booster notes okay right so let us quickly start uh, the uh, topics for today the first one is partnership partnership is uh, partnership it is very important for uh, one minute huh? partnership is there now partnership is very important for new and old syllabus both there are uh, varieties of problems to be covered but i have given this all just so that i can cover up the booster notes and all okay so let us start with the partnership partnership is basically divided into uh, yeah is helping me out till then partnership is basically divided into three topics that is dissolution of a partnership firm conversion of a partnership firm in a company and then you have piecemeal distribution also okay right so now let us see the partnership what are the reasons of the dissolution that they may ask you and this are the simple thing right when you need to dissolve the firm in that case when the firm is uh, dissolved it can be done in three ways okay when all the partners are solvent and they give you a dissolution problem in exam this simple problem comes for 20 marks in the new syllabus and uh, 16 marks for the old syllabus so what is the first thing you will do realization account just as we prepare an amalgamation then partners capital account and then bank account ma'am balance sheet balance sheet is not there opening balance sheet is there and you are dissolving the firm so you will prepare these three accounts okay in extra if current account is there that is also merged with the capital account and then we will be doing the bank account okay right now after this uh, when all the partners are uh insolvent okay then same realization account partners capital account bank account but with that we will open a deficiency account you know deficiency is like a pit all the partners are insolvent now they are not bringing their debit balance we are not able to pay to our creditors right or not so then we will open a deficiency account it's like a pit dump all losses into that and then carry on okay close the deficiency account the partners who are having debit balance will also be transferred there and all third way of the dissolution is garner versus murray rule this kind of the dissolution happens when one of the partner is insolvent his loss is to be borne by solvent partners in the, the agreed ratio okay now how to go by this his let us check all the journal partners. entries whenever there is a realization account we should know first thing is aim is to close the books and the same thing we will be using for conversion also when i teach you conversion also closing the books will be same so transfer all assets to realization account at book value transfer all liabilities what's the nature of liability credit so debit on liabilities and transfer it to the realization account at book value and then uh, finally assets and liabilities you have transferred to realization account 
capital account you open put all the reserves and debit balance in the capital account after your two three entries your opening balance sheet is should be empty bank balance you write it in the bank account and open the t format ledger clear now start the process of realization whatever assets you have sold at agreed value market value credit and transfer it to the bank account bank account debit to realization for all the assets sold now can partners take some assets yes then partners capital account debit to realization account now observe one thing just uh, in a very simple way you have seen that you have transferred the assets at book value and bank to the uh, realization account is at market value so profit or loss has automatically come in the realization account right next now uh, payment of liabilities now liabilities uh, whatever like creditors were there i debited the creditors 2 rupees and transferred to realization while paying i may pay them less now while paying the liabilities realization debit why because in realization credit side already you have written creditors 2 now if you say realization to cash 3 sometimes you may have to pay extra so it's a loss or a profit can partners take some liability yes realization account debit to partners capital account and when partners take the liability their capital increases when they take their assets we will say we had to pay you 5 2 rupees to you took furniture debit got it right sometimes can i give to my creditors equal value of the assets and then no entry because creditors and assets both are transferred to realization account right now realization account debit to uh, cash that is the amount due to the creditor if more or less difference is there okay next now pay all the dissolution expenses realization to cash this is the same way we close the books in case of amalgamation also so when you have to write the exam amalgamation and partnership just link up i am teaching you partnership their shareholders account here partners capital account okay right now partners loan actually when you have money you should pay partners loan in priority to partners capital and then you can transfer the partners uh, loan to partners capital account if given in the exam current account also you transfer to the partners capital account finally close your realization account profit and loss also give it to the partners now all the reserves joint life policy all joint life policy is an important treatment i'll show you a separate table for that so now reserves and all debit to the capital account all the reserves now partners capital account debit all losses in the balance sheet opening balance sheet you have pnl debit balance all losses belong to partner all reserves belongs to partner just imagine how the partners capital account will look opening balance current account loan account profit reserves all add and debit all losses finally the partner who is having credit balance pay them one who is having debit balance receive and then you close the partners capital account and the bank account now in dissolution there is no balance sheet so when the bank account has zero balance it will tally means your accounts are proper followed all of you right two proper workings in the exam now here very important is treatment of joint life policy i have a table for that ready for you because this is a crisp and clear revision and there was some technical problem from our side so we got delayed also so now let us start okay joint life policies are taken okay when you pay the premium you may have debited partners capital account i am here sorry in the table when you pay the premium if you have debited capital to bank now what you do bank to partners capital account okay the comments are also on so if you feel that it is not clear or any doubts you have keep commenting if you feel the table is really good take a pause later on in the video take a screenshot 
take and note down so that you can do last moment revision in a good way, right? When you have paid the premium capital to bank, so now what? Bank to capital. Same way assets, joint life policy to bank. Now how will you come to know ma'am that in the opening balance sheet, in the asset side, GLP was given. That means whenever you have paid the premium, you have treated it as asset. JLP asset to bank. JLP asset to bank. Now it's the time to mature that. So bank to JLP. You got it? JLP to bank is clear. Now bank to JLP you have got. And then... Uh, rupees give it to all the partners in the old ratio. Sometimes JLP reserve is also given. Then JLP asset and reserve. It's like sinking fund. JLP asset may uh, 1 rupee to bank, 1 rupee to bank. Same PNL to JLP reserve. Uttanahi reserve you have created. So now it's time. You close the JLP account debit. When you have the JLP account, Bank account debit to JLP, you will get the profit, give it to partners and JLP reserve, straight give it to old partners, old ratio. In fact, all the partners, this is a dissolution. Is treatment of JLP clear to you? There's one more way of treating. Suppose the JLP is 10,000 and maturity value is 15. Okay, then you can take it through realization account also. Bank to realization account. In that case, JLP's book value, like all the other assets, transfers JLP's book value on the debit side. Realization to JLP. Now bank to realization 15 and 5000 profit you will get. Right? Or you can route it through JLP reserve which is already there 10,000, 5000 more and then transfer to the partner's capital account. All clear to all of you, right? JLP's concept and dissolution now. This is very easy when all the partners are solvent. Transfer all assets, transfer all liabilities, open the capital account, give all reserves to old partners, sell all the assets or give it to partners, pay off all the liabilities or give it to partners and close. That's very quite simple. Okay, right. Uh, one minute, huh? Yeah. Now, can we do one thing here that if one of the partner is insolvent, then even if they don't say we need to apply Garner versus Murray rule. Now, Garner versus Murray rule says what? Okay. Whenever one of the partner, I'll say orally without reading this, then you see. Whenever one of the partner is insolvent, his debit balance or loss is borne by solvent partners. Not in their profit sharing ratio, in the ratio of their capitals just before dissolution. Just before dissolution. Clear? Right. So now how do I, we do that? Okay. A partner like solvent partners. Sabse pehle to solvent partners should bring in cash as per their share of loss on realization. Including solvent partners having debit balance. Once again. There may be solvent partners who is having debit balance. So he's saving, I am just very weak, I can pay my own money. Ask all the partners to get loss on realization in cash. What will be the journal entry? Cash account debit to partners capital account equal to the loss. Now, only those solvent partners who are having credit balance will bear the loss of insolvent partners should be borne by solvent partners. Only having credit balance in the ratio of their capital just before dissolution. Now very important. Your capital is 50,000 and other partners 40. On dissolution you took some assets and liabilities. Don't take that. Just take 5 is to 4 only. But will you take reserves effect? Yes. Reserves are not distributed to you. But they are part of their capital. No. Right. Okay, so then in that ratio we will bring the loss 
एंड द इंसॉल्वेंट पार्टनर जो डेबिट है उसको क्रेडिट करो एंड सॉल्वेंट पार्टनर आर बेरिंग द लॉस यू डेबिट दैम ओके लेट इज क्विकली सी हाउ दिस वर्क या नाउ इन ऑर्डर टू कैलकुलेट द रेशियो ऑफ द कैपिटल इन केस ऑफ फिक्सड कैपिटल नो एडजस्टमेंट इज रिक्वायर्ड जस्ट टेक द फिक्सड कैपिटल एंड डन इन केस ऑफ फ्लक्चुएटिंग रेशियो इट शुड बी कैलक्युलेटेड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ करेक्ट कैपिटल इमीडिएटली बिफोर द डिजोल्यूशन क्लियर जस्ट बिफोर द डिजोल्यूशन and just look i have given in bold capital calculate you have to do it in the working note mein karna hai and you have to do it very clearly capital plus reserves minus pnl debit balance and it does not include assets and ma'am assets and liabilities are taken no but when on dissolution so don't include that right solvent partners having debit balance will bring loss on realization in cash but they will not share the insolvent partners loss is this clear to all of you now a theory question is asked many times in question number 1 5 into 4 marks or later last question what are the exceptions to the rule wherein the uh, garner versus murray rule is not applicable so when is it not applicable when the firm is having only two members ab kya apply karoge one has gone so another one has to bear all the loss when there is a separate agreement with the partners and when all the partners of the firm become insolvent these are the cases wherein garner versus murray rule will not be applicable okay right i have just kept one problem ready solved so that you all can see all assets are transferred at book value all liabilities are transferred at book value all expenses and all you pay partners have opened the balance a and all give them their reserves general reserve loss on realization now look carefully c is insolvent so a b and d all three will bring the cash loss on realization are you getting d is also having a debit balance but he will bring loss on realization but d will not bear now whose loss c's loss will be borne by whom a and b a and b ko debit kiya and c i have credited and then i will pay to a and b and all now how did we work out this okay loss is to be borne a's capital and b's capital is taken 65 and 40 now how 65 and 40 capital give them reserves give them general reserve general reserve belongs to them only before dissolution so include reserves and losses don't include assets and liabilities taken over by the partner okay right so all this is clear to all of you right it is there all from the icis material only just to make it look very brief i have given this material let us go in the third way now and if you want to take any notes this recording will always be there you can pause it take the screenshot and note down right ab likhna to padega bina likhe nahi aayega aapko imagine if all the partners are insolvent then first thing is don't transfer liabilities to realization account realization account would look very simple transfer all the assets to realization account liabilities don't transfer to realization account why we will open the liabilities account creditors bills payable because you know we are not having money to pay them full we'll transfer assets to realization account we'll sell off the assets finally liabilities are there i'm just writing here an example example that uh, um, creditors are there 25000 and bills payable are there 20 okay 45 and i have only uh, 30 rupees in my hand now can we say ma'am pay the bills payable no please they are this has come in one exam when all the partners are insolvent Can I pay just two bills payable? 
छोटा है ना उसको दे देते हैं नो इफ आई हैव थर्टी रुपीज थर्टी रुपीज विल बी पेड इन द रेशो ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव इज टू ट्वेंटी इज दिस क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू क्रेडिटर्स एंड बिल्स पेबल ऑल योर लाइबिलिटीज विल बी पेड एड रेटेबली बट अफकोर्स बिफोर दिस इफ यू हैव सम लाइबिलिटीज विच हैव चार्ज ऑन दी एसेट्स लाइक यू हैव टेकन अ बैंक लोन एंड अगेंस्ट दैट यू हैव मॉडगेज योर ऑफिस बिल्डिंग देन सेल द ऑफिस बिल्डिंग एंड पे द बैंक लोन got it so secured liabilities will be paid first like we do in liquidation but only up to that security your secured liabilities 10 and your assets realize 9 for 1 rupee secured liability will stand in line with your creditors and bills payable okay right thank you so much for responding that all the um things are clear to you that volume and screen and everything and maybe it's a something for me to learn that i need to be very perfect jab aap exam likhoge na main bhi technology seekh lungi chalo aage karte hain so you got it and then prepare a deficiency account i can just show you in 2 minutes how the deficiency account will look deficiency account debit side you write all the liabilities liabilities मैम क्रेडिटर्स आर स्टिल शाउटिंग टू रुपीज मोर टू पे अब नहीं है डेबिट द क्रेडिटर्स पुट इट ऑन द डेफिशिएंसी पार्टनर्स डेबिट बैलेंस वी सेट पे पे दे आर ऑल इंस्टॉलमेंट पार्टनर्स को क्रेडिट करो डेफिशिएंसी को डेबिट तो डेफिशिएंसी डेबिट साइड ऑल द पार्टनर्स डेबिट अकाउंट विल कम एंड डेफिशिएंसी क्रेडिट साइड ऑल द लाइबिलिटीज विल कम एंड क्लोज क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू राइट that's all for three types of the dissolution when all the partners are solvent realization account capital account bank account exactly like in amalgamation realization account equity shareholders account bank account ki jagah purchasing company now if one of the partner is insolvent apply garner versus murray rule if all are insolvent then deficiency account is a pit open all losses and profits and all in that and then close it okay i see i material problems are only good and piecemeal so they are super i'm just starting with that only piecemeal yeah right thank you so much for the response you can always send a query here only below this video and we will be solving it sure okay now this is asked too much and ici is only we are of course as a teacher we don't correct all but just the class test papers when i'm correcting or mock test i don't i'm teaching the concept but rather than going deep into all other things i want to show you the pitfalls ki kahan galti hoti hai because you all are perfect in piecemeal so let me give you a very important gist of the piecemeal piecemeal problems are asked in two ways one is that uh, piecemeal whole distribution table by relative surplus method and another is uh, piecemeal by maximum loss method maximum loss method only one table you will get the answer but relative surplus method yes you will need to go through three or more workings but it is super aur kahan kya galti hoti hai i will tell you as and how we go now once we have completed the dissolution it's time to pay off the liabilities pay government dues pay secured creditors pay unsecured creditors now it's the time to pay the partners when i start paying partners the problem is a and b their psr are equal one is to one and their capital is say 50000 and 40000 now how do i pay if i piecemeal means i am realizing my assets my datas my stock gradually and i am paying now how do i pay them suppose if i have realized 10000 you can't say ma'am pay to b no he is having just 4000 balance no we can't even pay them equally because their capitals are not equal and after this 10000 they will realize the money or not we don't know right then how do we pay them if we pay them you can say in the ratio of 1 is to 1 no 
can we pay them in the ratio of 5 is to 4? No, because how much more will realize what will be the loss, we don't know. So, this is a superb method to pay them rateably. Take their adjusted final capital current reserves. Now, listen, if you have a pen pad, note it down. When you start piecemeal distribution, if partners have taken loan, pay them first, separately. Creditors and loan and then you go to capital. If partners have uh, taken the loan, I am sorry, once again, if partners have taken the loan, their capital is 50, but he has taken the loan from firm, 10,000 minus kardo. And you start this table with 40,000. Am I clear? If partners have taken the loan, minus it. I am telling you the pitfalls. If partners have given the loan, make more additional column here. Creditors, partners loan and then partners capital. Is it clear? Right. So very important these two points are that you take partners capital adjusted capital current reserves losses. Finally, how much I have to pay to A? 40,000. To B, 4,000. Done? Now divide this with the PSR. And uh, you will get, after dividing, adjust the PSR to get the surplus capital. Once you divide it by the PSR, I think rather than this table. Uh, yeah, I want to do this problem only. No need to read the problem. Just see. Their capitals are 140, 70, 14. PSR is 3 is to 2 is to 1. So divide by the PSR. And take lowest capital as the base. 14. Now 14 is 1. I am trying to adjust their capitals in the PSR taking lowest capital 14 as the base. Okay. Now if this is 14 then V's capital should be 28. A's capital should be 42. Now 1 minus 5, 6 is the surplus capital. You know once I come to the capital 42, 28 and 14 then the PSRs are like 3 is to 2 is to 1. PSR and the capital is same. So can I pay excess 140 minus 42, 98, 70 minus 28. Can I pay excess first the surplus capital? Yes. Again divide by the PSR. Okay. Again you get the lowest 21. 21 for 2, 42. So according to 21, 3, 63. So now... He is having relative surplus capital 35. Now look at this. Can I make a priority table? Pay first 35 to A. Okay. Then 63 and 42. Pay 95,000. I hope you are seeing. I have written also here the priority. First you pay to creditors obviously. And yes I missed it. Many times in exam they are giving you nice flavor. Provision for repairs and all may come. So may come means keep the amount separate. Now only. And then uh, creditors pay. Then pay to A. 35,000. After paying to A. Pay to A and V. 63 and 42. Right. And once you pay excess to A. Excess to these two. Finally their capitals will come. 42, 28 and 14. I hope you are imagining this reverse. Banana to aise hi padega. Divide the capital, take lowest capital, multiply it, you get surplus capital. Again divide, take lowest capital, again multiply surplus. But while paying, first pay 35 to A, then pay uh, out of 98, 35 you pay, this will be 63, this is 42. So keep paying A and B in 3 is to 2. And then finally pay to A, V and T in the ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1. Okay? Right. So this is how we do this um, piecemeal. And in this I have prepared one more extra table. Amounts were not given ready. You know sometimes in the exam they are giving first realization, second realization. And out of that if expenses are there, pay that first. And then you get the cash. Okay? Right. Any doubt until now or all clear this table? 
and now when you start paying pitfall for all of you हमको वंडरला नहीं जाना है कोई स्लाइड में नहीं गिरना है and that pitfall is don't miss taking the opening cash take the opening cash and then start with april receipts give it according to your priority as you have decided if you do the whole table of piecemeal distribution this is your main answer this was your first working this is your second working this is your third working this is your main answer now if you decide to do the whole problem correctly ma'am i just missed taking the march balance then the whole problem will go wrong what marks you can expect to get the problem carefully okay finally when the august month comes and the balance is there uh, after paying the balance for the august and all this is just a problem i am showing and uh, you paid then you get the contingent liability free at the end of the problem they say no no we had kept for the liability 10000 in the april now in august it's not payable so now let us distribute that also to the partners finally you will get this loss and you know there is a cross checking way in exam just in working note prepare a small t format okay this is not given in the book but i am telling you it applies and try to put all the total of your assets okay realized value and the book value try to put all expense on debit the way you know realization account if you try to prepare total realization account you will get the same loss what you are getting in last that will show that your loss is clear correct followed or not noted down the trick to check that your piecemeal problem is correct is to make a small realization account in the working and check now you know in the same problem i'm trying to work out some more options can they give commission on assets realized or commission on amount paid yes any month you take up just for example i'm taking april april may you had opening cash 28 you realize 77000 one of the partner may say whatever assets are realized i want 1% commission because firm is already dissolved i am taking care of the work of the dissolution so april may in the 77000 1% commission you deduct and pay him whatever commission is given to partner is has got nothing to do with his capital just pay it in cash say 77 minus 7 and then only 70 you start distributing clear now sometimes commission is paid on payments so whatever payment you make see i have given here commission on the amount paid so amount paid is say uh, 32000 or 31645 so amount available is 102 because 102 may say two commission first i will keep and then 100 i will distribute what i will distribute 100 i don't know but i know what is 102 available with me so can i say in 1022 is commission in 31645 question mark so you will get the amount of commission okay right now if one of the partner has given loan to firm i'm just giving all the options then just as a creditor open the partner's loan account don't merge it with capital loans are to be paid first and then the capital okay now suppose if arun one of the partner has taken the loan from the firm then deducted from his capital i have to give you arun 50 and minus your loan 5 45 only i will give got it right so like this all the adjusted capitals you have to take i think best possible yeah piecemeal i want to talk you know after doing all this availability and priority we started paying off as per the priority decided pay 35 to a then 63 and this to be you know we were paying a time came when their capitals and their psrs were equal now in between see imagine c is taking some assets c took over equipment the point i want to say is 
in the piecemeal distribution can one of the partners uh, uh, you know can one of the partners just uh, um, take some assets without any reason and he has disturbed the piecemeal distribution yes or no we had decided that we will pay to a b and c 3 is to 2 is to 1 so 4300 it there in between c took 1000 rupees furniture also now he again disturbed the table so give him 1000 rupees furniture, take the balance, again you have to prepare the relative surplus table. Right? So this is how we do the piecemeal distribution. Let us quickly go to the maximum loss method. In one table and then redemption of debentures, I will give you some booster notes. Okay? Right. Maximum method mein kya hota hai? when you have to pay to partners 30, 30 and 20, 80. But their PSR is 3 is to 3, 2 is to 1. So PSR and capitals are not same. Then in that case, what you will do? Suppose first realization is 10,000. Now just look at the screen. Huh? One table you will get the answer. Okay. Okay, so 3 is to 2 is to 1, you can't pay. You can't pay 10,000 in 3 is to 2 is to 1 because their capitals are different and PSR is different. Can I say, I don't know how to distribute 10,000. But if 10,000 is last receipt, maximum loss is 70,000. And losses are born in PSR. Then you will get the losses. If you deduct from the capital, you will get the balance. But now A's balance is negative. A's loss is borne by B and C in the ratio of their capital. So automatically you will get how to give 10,000. Now give 10,000. So A didn't get, get anything. 30,000. B got 30 minus 3367, 26. C got 20 minus 663, 30. Piecemeal is important. So I am showing you the problem after the seesaw buyback. We will go by all the concepts. Okay. I hope the speed of the class is fine. And you can respond. Okay. Now in the next month I realized 15,000. Okay. Now I don't know how to give 15,000. But out of 70, 15,000 I gave. 55,000 is the maximum loss. Which is born in the PSR. And so when I give maximum loss. 30, I am saying to A, now in 27, so you have to bear loss. Take 2, 5 home. 26, 18, you have to bear loss. Take 8 home. Automatically, I got how to give 15,000. Easy or not? Just once practice from your material, from the practice manual, all the problems, piecemeal problems are superb in ICS material. All entries are covered in each and every problem. You will see some new adjustment. And mark it and keep. Don't miss out taking the opening balances. Last one. Now out of 70 I paid 15. I have 55 balance. I don't know how to pay 25. But 30 if loss hai. So 3 is to 2 is to 1. So automatically I got how to pay. Right. Last part of the piecemeal now we are going. Can you all respond those who are watching it live. If the speed of the class is fine. And you all are getting a grip on how to do piecemeal problem and maximum loss method. Any doubt is there, please put it in the commenting section. Okay? Right. And if it is good, then also do comment, please. Conversion of partnership firm in a company. Then closing the books is same. Just like you have done for the realization. Okay? So, <clears throat> just like the realization account may we have done, um, okay, the, it could be sole proprietorship conversion, that's what I have given here. Or two partnership, most of the time they are asking two partnership for merging, one of the partner is common. Or can we convert partnership firm into a company and all the partners will get the shares of the company. Some excess may get debentures or preferences. So anyhow, 
when you close the books closing the procedure is same but only thing is when i transfer my assets and liability to realization account is same i will not sell off my assets i will not pay off my liabilities against that my whole business is purchased by a company so new firm account debit to realization account isn't it same like amalgamation purchasing company debit to realization account new firm and then all the assets which are taken over by the proprietor okay so capital account debit to realization if they have taken over and you know when i am converting in company company may not take all my assets so while calculating purchase consideration i will take only assets and liabilities taken over at agreed value remaining assets i will sell off remaining liabilities i will pay off okay so these entries i am not reading they are just in routine and then the new firm will give me capital or if it is a new company they will give me shares and these shares i will be giving to my partners closing the books is same then the new firm or the new company will write opening entries they will welcome all the assets only taken over at agreed value all the liabilities at agreed value and two partners capital account they will give us capital share in their firm if it is a new firm and if it is a company then routine entries business purchase to the firm take all assets liabilities to business purchase if you are paying more it's goodwill if you are paying less it's capital reserve then partners capital account debit to share capital debentures and bank that is the new company can give to the partners shares but you know sometimes what happens new company has to pay you 1 lakh now they are saying we'll give 40 40000 shares okay remaining they can give debentures in this partnership they may ask you adjust the closing capitals in the ratio of the psr so you can take lowest capital as the base and adjust or you can take total capital as the base as they say in the exam i hope you are getting you just make a table write down the closing cash uh, closing capital then the psr then the required capital excess cash or less cash can be adjusted in the cash capital account can be adjusted in the cash or uh, they can give preference shares also right like this problem i have given just look at this problem a and b a and b are partner in this firm b and c in this firm now both of the firm are merging and they have not asked you to close the books straight they have asked you calculate the goodwill and directly the balance sheet and if it is a company you are required to prepare vertical balance sheet so to get final balance of a b and c can i prepare a table like this a and b's capital b and c's capital a b's reserves b c's reserves of course these are different firm but partners are same no now raise the goodwill in old ratio again raise the goodwill in old ratio and this total goodwill 75 45 right off in the new ratio clear revaluations profit are there in first form give it only to a and b vehicle losses there in the second form just give it to b and c clear or not so like this we have to give them the profit and losses and all okay finally after doing the plus and minus listen i am saying a b and c i have to pay you 194 215 and 61 who who should pay new firm but new firm is saying no we want their psr in ratio of 4 is to 5 is to 1 then can we take total capital as the base i have not made a here but just take total capital as base 4 by 10 a co okay like that and here they have adjusted taking b's capital as base so 215 is the capital for 5 so for 4 it should be 172 so 
for one it should be four forty three. Just see, is it in the ratio of four is to five is to one? Yes. Then excess capital you can transfer to their current account. And had it been the company, then this these many equity shares they will get in the ratio of their PSR. And all this they can get preferential. This is a very smart work. Take a pause and can someone message in the chat box if everything is all clear and you all are following on. All clear? Right. So this is how conversion problems can be asked. Okay. Chalo. So we have completed the partnership. Let us uh, go to um, redemption of debentures. Yes, nice problems are asked and for that I have a table also. So, how to redeem the preference shares? Let us see that. Okay, right. Redemption of the preference shares is, um, and there, there are some changes in the DRR rate and all also. But please listen carefully. The mindset for redemption of debentures is, you should be very, very perfect in your investment chapter of the group one. I can show you one solved problem now. It's ICI materials problem only. Wherein uh, you will see ma'am as if we are doing the investment account only triple column. In the last redemption will come into play. That is redemption without sinking fund. If it is redemption with sinking fund. It's exactly same like fund based account in non trading what you do it in the foundation. Okay, right. Hello. Let us uh, start with this uh, redemption of the debentures. Two seconds I would take a pause please. I'm really sorry. This is a live going on. Till two seconds and my screen is on. You can just see my screen. Okay, now redemption of debentures is repayment of the debentures. So it is asked in many ways and weightage wise also I will tell you. If it is these two methods that is you purchase your own debentures from the open market. Okay and cancel it. Then these are 10 marks problem. And this is one super problem in the ICI study material only. Conversion of debentures into shares. Okay. So only the conversion, how many shares will be issued? 5 marks. After the conversion, no journal entry. Just make the working and present it. Then it is the, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> 10 marks problem. Now, can I pay my debenture holders? I have to pay after 5-6 years. First one is very simple. Lump sum, that is debentures to debenture holder, debenture holder to bank. Now listen. Can I buy my debentures in open market? Yes. Can I cancel it immediately? I am buying my own debentures and I am cancelling. Then which account I will open? Debenture redemption account. Can I buy my debentures at the market value 9? Yes. But while cancelling, debentures are always cancelled at the face value. Cancel the debentures 10. Against that debenture redemption 9, profit will go to capital reserve. Is this clear to all of you? Now, can I purchase my own debentures and hold it? Yes. We are going to do buyback. Can I buy back my own shares and hold it? No. When you buy back your shares, you have to buy and cancel it. But this, you can hold your own debentures as investment. And your debentures on the liability side. Okay. So own debentures when I buy. It's as good as my investment triple column. Investment account triple column. I will give interest to myself. That journal entry and all also I will show you. 
and be prepared that you can confidently write 10 marks journal entry. Oh God, I prepared redemption of debentures so well, but I did T format and now they are asking. It's only your mindset, I'm telling you. When you are writing interest debit to bank, to outsiders, to interest on own debenture, when you are posting, you are framing the correct journal entry only in your mind. It's the laziness that we don't do writing practice of journal entry. Okay? So be clear that they may ask you journal entries also. Right? Okay. Now because debenture holders are outsiders and they have a risk, you need to create DRR. Right now DRR is not required for these banks, financial institutes, NBFCs and all these cases. No DRR is required. Okay? So in the latest RTPK Sapse, unlisted companies need DRR at the rate of 10% of the debentures issued. You know, I have 5 lakh debentures. Then at least PML account debit to debenture redemption reserve should be 10%. Those who have studied from old books, this may be 25% uh, or whatever. But right now it is 10%. Okay, right. And now one more provision is there. Okay. That um, all the NBFCs listed, HFCs, housing finance companies, all other listed companies, unlisted companies, by the end of the 30th April of this year, they need to have liquid form 15% of the debentures they are going to write off on the next 31st. Let me say my financial year is 1920. On 31st March, I'm going to redeem 1 lakh shares. Then 1 lakh 15%. 15,000. I have to invest by 30th of April. You know, as a safeguarding. 15,000. In liquid form, I have to keep it either as a simple FD, deposit with the scheduled bank, or unencumbered security of the central government, or any securities as mentioned in the Indian Trust Act, or any bonds. Is this clear? These are the latest provisions for the debenture redemption reserve and very important. Right? Okay. Now, let us see uh, how do we uh, check all the provisions. Yeah, one thing very important when we are making 15% provisions and that uh, see, this is 15% on how many debentures you are going to redeem this year. And this 10% which they asked first, that was the total debentures. 10% you should have DRR. That is different. And whatever debentures I am going to redeem in the current year, 15% I should have it <clears throat> in that. Okay? okay. Now very important here is, when you are creating these provisions, you have to create whatever you are going to pay in cash. Suppose out of these 1 lakh, 20,000 debentures I am going to redeem in the form of converting in equity shares. Then I have to make 15% provision only for 80,000. Is this clear to all of you? Right. Chalo. Let us check up, uh, check up the next one now. Journal entries. Okay. When, um, yeah. These are only the amendments. You are asking me amendments. What rates I gave you and what provision you have to do on the last day. They are only the amendments. Now before I actually dive into this, I want to share with you some booster notes. And one problem I will show you. It will be very clear and we will complete with the debentures revision. Okay. The next you say you want to do ESOP or BICE back. You can put me a message in the chat box. Okay. Chalo, look at these booster notes. If debentures are purchased for immediate cancellation, open debenture redemption account. If debentures are purchased for holding as investment, then buy own debentures account as investment. And that too triple column, right? When debentures are purchased and recorded at cost, the purchase amount in the column, but interest and always, always calculated on face value. Now listen, when you buy debentures, you need to know the X interest and come interest. Ma'am, that I have done in group 1 over. No, no. 
redemption of debentures triple column also own debentures account debit to bank you are purchasing debentures at cum interest value so minus the interest you write in interest column and only the cost you write in cost column and nominal value you write it's a memorandum column which will help you to calculate the interest is this clear to all of you right <clears throat> so debentures triple column you will prepare nominal value interest and the face value now debentures are always cancelled at the face value profit is transferred to capital reserve own debentures are having triple column face value interest and cost accrued interest entry i told you this is the gist okay if you are watching this as a video pause here and take the screenshot note it down very important thing student should know i'll give an example if your year ending is 31st march and if interest is given on 30 june and 31 12 clear or not 30 june and 31 12 interest is given already the next interest will come in june and you are closing the books in march should you do accrued interest entry on your own debentures also accrued interest and if you have issued the debentures debenture interest payable for 3 months january february march suppose if your year ending is 31 12 and now they are giving interest in march and september then also the accrued interest entry will come opening and closing ma'am i did whole problem correct but i missed taking opening closing gone interest uh, column will not tally so accrued interest is to be calculated when the year ending is march and debenture interest is paid in june own debentures account how do you balance face value you will carry it forward cost you will carry forward and interest on the debit side is interest paid at the time of purchase interest on the credit side is interest received difference of interest account transfer it to pnl account are you getting that feel ma'am exactly we are in the um, investment class only then absolutely right we are in the investment class only yeah literally i am buying my own debentures as investment next year march i will cancel only one entry of cancellation own debentures debit to bank interest debit in interest column face value debit there okay all clear to all of you until now right <clears throat> so these are all the simple booster notes i'll go to the sinking fund later first with this let me show you a very simple problem solved problem no need to read also much anything and yes of course when they ask you the debentures problem the 3d makeup are your working notes if they give you come interest calculate and minus the interest if they give you x interest jag rahe na it's lunch time it's a challenging time to take class at this time <laughs> 2 to 5 right or not so uh, then if it is uh, that um, i am repeating if it is come interest minus the interest if it is x interest write the interest separately now look here are uh, you have purchased own debentures 50000 49450 see if you are getting cheap in the market it's good otherwise on the due date anyways you have to pay face value so you are buying and keeping in the meanwhile like the company will pay interest you will also get interest right or not and finally interest column transferred to pnl account can you see my cursor and uh, these carried forward okay right now after this next year you have purchased until now 88700 so 88700 own debentures credit and close own debentures is closed transfer it to the debentures account you have 2 lakh debentures out of that 88700 your own debentures you have purchased and you have cancelled but what's the face value 90000 1300 would be what capital reserve that's why i selected these solved problems is it clear or not 
own debentures account just make as if you are buying your own debentures and then cancel it at the face value transfer the profit to capital reserve all clear right now debenture interest so uh, debenture interest account i should pay 150000 interest to outsiders 50000 interest on my own debentures to yahan pe 1500 debit yahan pe here it is credit got it or not now same way on 30th of september i had 80 90000 debentures with me so 110 i'll pay outside 90 i'll keep it myself and uh, this was in september and march and i'm closing the books in december so 3 months interest i have to do debenture interest outstanding same is there in the opening also and so you get all this clear right and these are i told you these this is the 3d makeup that these are the instead of own debentures i'll call it debenture redemption account if 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 i purchase and cancel immediately now when i need to buy own debentures you can say ma'am it's very simple can they give extra flavors in the exam to buy own debentures sell your investment at a profit so bank account debit to investment to pnl extra they may ask you chalo let us go to the next way sinking fund if you have a sinking fund here i am in the booster notes the sinking fund can you see this now sinking fund method says that whenever you had to redeem debentures pnl to sinking fund you have created a fund sinking funds another name is debenture redemption reserve okay yeah is the voice not at all clear please respond because from my side it is all clear let me know if it is clear or not yeah so now when we uh, take a sinking fund it's like debenture redemption reserve i have created and ready for the redemption and this side i have invested it outside like the fund based accounting in the non trading okay right so now um, pnl to sinking fund pnl to sinking fund you have accumulated 9 lakh rupees and 9 lakh rupees you have invested outside they will not ask you all the years entries as you have studied in foundation for depreciation they will give you ready sinking fund is 9 lakh investment are 9 lakh sell all the investment profit and loss put it in the fund any premium or any losses put it in the fund and then with the investment money can you redeem your own debentures yes okay so now let us see what are the points and then we will i'll show you one problem like the way we have crawl every year pnl appropriation to sinking fund is done and sinking fund is invested outside along with interest now sinking fund interest add to the fund you know whatever investments you are having outside will you get interest on that yes where will you add the interest fund you know i call sinking fund as a dump yard sab dalna how it will look i'll show you premium on redemption of debentures while repaying instead of 100 i'll pay you 3 rupees is 3 rupees my expense loss sinking fund discount on issue of debentures they may give you opening account lying as it is close it and transfer to sinking fund investment sell it is there a profit and loss yes transfer it to sinking fund final balance of the sinking fund transfer it to general reserve because now shares have been redeemed okay right now uh, there are some more booster points for the conversion and all i'll tell you one minute <clears throat> one problem for the sinking fund now look at this we don't even need to read the problem just i'm telling you and you see and it will be clear this is there in the icis material only 443 250 is the sinking fund same i have investment okay now on these investment can i receive interest yes bank to interest interest to sinking fund tell them now it's time to sell the investments 
so i sold a part of the investment at loss loss where i'll put 900 sinking fund and with this money 33000 i redeemed debentures and face value pay i am again saying if you want note it down somewhere debentures may be purchased at market value but they are redeemed or cancelled at face value and profit will go to capital reserve loss to the pnl now remaining investments i sold it for 423 so 1450 profit i have look at sinking fund account opening add interest add profit debit loss debit premium on redemption there could be discount on issue finally sinking fund is of no use now sinking fund or another name is debenture redemption reserve is of no use so transfer it to your general reserve account clear to all of you right so this is how the accounts are opened once again if it is with sinking fund how many accounts you will open in the exam debentures account debenture redemption reserve account investment account debenture redemption if you feel not required directly also you can do and then premium and discount otherwise these three accounts you know now i have a question for all of you here when i am investing my this reserve 443 outside can I invest my own sinking fund for buying my own debentures in market? Is it possible? Yes. I am repeating. Sinking fund, this money, I need it after 6 years. So I thought of investing. Can I invest in my own debentures? Yes. So your sinking fund investment, ke saad, we can have one more account own debentures. Just now I show, so it showed you triple column. So you may buy your own debentures at 80,000. But if face value is 100, it will be cancelled at 1 lakh. Clear to all of you? Right. After this required last 15 minutes, one or two selected problems are there in ICEI's material. That also I want to discuss. Okay. Okay. Right. <clears throat> So this is how sinking fund problems are done. Now let us see conversion. If debentures are converted into equity shares, that's a way of paying them. But you know, ma'am, 10 debentures, how many equity shares? That will depend upon the market value of equity shares. I have to redeem 5,000 debentures. And equity shares value is say 40. So 5,000 divided by 40 market value. Number of shares I will issue, remaining will go to the securities premium. Clear or not? Hmm? Now this problem is already asked twice in the exam. These debentures are due for redemption and the terms of provisions are there. They are going to be redeemed at 5% premium. You are paying them 105. Okay, right. And also conferred option to debenture holders. To convert 20% of their holding in equity shares at 15.75 and they all agreed also. Now except for the 100 debenture holders totally having 25,000 rest all decided to convert. So out of 1 lakh 25 debenture holders they said we don't want equity shares. 75 they decided but 75,000 only 20% that is Against 15,000, they are going to get shares. Okay, I am repeating. 25,000, they will get cash and go home. 75 said, okay, okay, we agree for conversion. But only 20%. So that comes to 15,000. 15,000 debentures. Whatever you pay equity share, they should take 105 home. 105, why? 100, 5 rupees premium. So we want to give them 15.75 and per equity share is 15.75. So how many equity shares will give them? 1 lakh. At what rate we will give them? 10 each. Right? Okay. And 5.75 will go to securities premium. Now listen. Out of 1 lakh, only 15,000 debenture holders. 
twenty percent. They agreed. No, remaining eighty five thousand you have to pay them one not five cash. Students do mistake here. They take here seventy five. Why seventy five? One lakh may say twenty five to didn't agree. So seventy five will take. And here also only. So out of one lakh only fifteen were for conversion. Eighty five cash clear to all of you, right? So eighty five will take cash, and then you can do all the plus minus and prepare a vertical balance sheet like this. That's all for your redemption of trade ventures. Any query, anything you need, let me know. Okay? Otherwise, then straight we are going to ESOP. Okay. ESOP and buyback are there in the website, so I will pick up from there. Yeah. How do we share the screen now? Pravid, are you there? One minute. Esop also nice questions are there with the graded vesting also. One minute. Are you able to see the ESOP on the screen? Can someone respond? Stock option scheme, and then we will do the buyback. I will show you in my equation problem. The share be. Okay. Can you able to see the screen or not? Thank you so much that the screen is visible now. I'm really, really sorry for the time which is going on, but I wanted to bring this best of the questions here. Yeah. So let us do ESOP now. ESOP has two type of the problems. Five marks wherein you are giving the shares to the employees at less than the market rate, and the difference you as a company will put it in your expense. Okay. now there are definitions and other things vesting period and uh, all the concept yeah so let us see it one by one yeah exercise period vesting period okay grant once the vesting period is over you can give the i'm just going through the question so that i can teach you listen now if there are there is two and a half or three years time like that How will you divide and give it? Right? Yeah. How the journal entries are passed? 
okay yeah now abc limited has 1000 employee stock options at 40 when the market value is 160 the vesting period is 2 and a half years and 300 unvested options lapse on 15 2002 till take your calculators pick up your calculators ye aise hi padhte hain and it will be very interesting if we do like this 1000 are there right and uh, we are giving them 160 share at 40 so we are going to bear 120 rupees expense that is equal to 1 lakh 20000 divide by 2.5 are you getting so 48000 we are writing the journal entries on the last day of 2001 expense to outstanding because i am going to incur a huge expense after two and a half years so can i put equally this is two and a half three years expense to outstanding okay and then this expense you transfer to pnl account now in the next year let us see in the next year what what is happening in the next year again same entry in 2002 same entry 48000 debit expense to outstanding pnl to expense now what happened in between some options lapsed so options lapsed means those employees don't want to take so now no point in putting in expense and creating a liability because what i have created my liability that is also extra so can i transfer extra liability debit you can say ma'am expense to liability no now is of outstanding debit to expense but if i credit expense now my this year's expense will be affected whereas this expenses should go to the last year's expense so when i reverse it expense to outstanding expense to outstanding now extra expenses outstanding account debit to general reserve clear to all of you outstanding account debit to general reserve that's what we will do so general reserve we will be putting 12000 how it comes i'll show you the working now it's time out of 1000 only 700 had said 100 to yahi pe waste ho gaya and now we gave 600 so only this entry can also come for 5 marks read the entry please 2 minutes Hmm. Yeah. Bank account debit six hundred into forty. What my employees are paying. ESOP account debit six hundred into one twenty. Right. So total is how much? One eighty. Two equity share capital ten. Six hundred into ten. And two securities premium six hundred into one fifty. is this all clear to all of you bank account debit esop outstanding now listen uh, expense to outstanding what you have done and now outstanding is debit till if there is any balance in outstanding write it off to general reserve working should be very clear i want to show you the working see actually we had put 48 48 thinking for 1000 employees for two and a half years so 96 we have put but then 300 they said no we don't want so 700 into 120 i wanted my expense to be 84 but by mistake i have already provided for expense and created a liability 96 excess liability can i reverse this was in 2003 now while issuing the shares only 600 employees took and i had provided for 700 clear or not so one to uh, 100 more employees i have 120 rupees 12000 extra transfer to general reserve here there is a very nice problem wherein your vesting period is only not decided then you can prepare a table and decide the vesting period and do it i hope you are getting sometimes the grant of the option and vesting period is in the same year then two entries will come bank account debit not esop outstanding esop expense debit two equity share capital 
to securities premium. Clear or not? And of course, expense you have to transfer to PNL. But if vesting period goes more than one year, then ESOP to outstanding, ESOP to outstanding, outstanding to reserve in between if the unvested options are lapsing and then you pass the routine entry. Uh, the chat box is on if you have any doubt in ESOP asked otherwise illustration number 6 market very important and I want to take 5 minutes time to discuss that then we will go to the buyback period limited and all the problems which are there in the ICS material only okay rather than giving the concept or so you know you check these problems so that after this also you check it any doubt you have you can comment it okay there are related to this videos also you can check we have done earlier here at this podium only mock test revision also so there also i have given many concepts you can check it in the other video Chalo. this is a nice problem look at the problem vesting period is not decided it says that option would vest within a year if market price is 50 but it is not so then let it be two years Option will vest in one year if earning of choice limited is 16%. But if it is less than 16%, then it will go to two years. In the two years, they say vesting period will be two years only if average earning is 13%. But if average earning is less than, it will go three years. But then you can say, ma'am, for pehle se three years lena hai. We don't know what is the situation in the first year, second year, third year, how you can predict and in between unvested options are lapsing 100 options are given to 1000 employees so you started with 1 lakh then 5000 lapsed then 4000 lapsed and so on okay right so let us see how we are doing this uh, employee stock options yeah anything else you want to revise let me know work very hard we are not closing Still 15-20 minutes are there. So I am going to take after this the buyback concept. Okay, buyback may that, uh, I don't know, I can say how many times they have asked you that X and Y equation problem. That's why I am sharing the screen also with you. So that rather than me saying orally all the concept from screen, it is clear. So please stay back. And because of the technical issue, we started laced and missed on my introduction so only my name is important CA Deepti Cheda qualified in the year 2000 and last 20 years I have been in teaching field that's enough right chalo ab dekhte hai iska table how we will make this table entries are very simple I want to explain this table because many students ask me to explain this table and I want to do it right now just one minute yeah 1 lakh options, 5,000 lapsed. So, 95,000. 95,000, 20 we are giving you. Actually, the market value is 50. So, 30 is the expense for company. 2850. Now, company say, vesting period will be 1 year if some conditions are satisfied. But they are not satisfied. It's there in the problem. So, can I take half now and half next year? Yes. So, I took half as expense now. Next year, out of 95, 4,000 more left. So, I have to provide only for 91 into 30. 27. Now, 27, 30 also, I came to know that average income did not cross 13%. So, vesting period cannot be 2 years. That I came to know here. Now, I said, no, no, vesting period has to be 3 years. So, already 2 years are over, no? So, 2 by 3. Can I write off 1820 till now? 2 years are over. But out of 1820, 1425 I had already written off. So, this year how much I should write off? Expense to outstanding? 395. Next year again, 87500 more lapsed. I should provide first 2625. But out of 2625, 1425 and 395. 1425, sorry, and 395. 1820, we have already written off. So, can we write off 8,5,000? Yes. Clear to all of you. So, vesting period is not same here. Look at this working in 2 minutes. I'll just be back with a buyback next problem. 
any doubt you have you can ask me Sorry for the interruptions. Maybe we are used to taking in the evening. No problem. Chalo. Is this problem very clear to all of you? Let us go to the buyback of shares now. Okay. Buyback of shares we will go on to. Buyback of shares may we should know the conditions. Okay. So conditions I had written in my booster file. What you should know the three conditions for the buyback and they will not be given uh, ready to you. Okay. You have to remember it. One minute. Buyback me till I am switching on the screen. I want to share with you. One concept is also there. For the equivalent right uh, shares and that is also many times asked. Can we issue the equity shares with the right, different rights? Yes. Hmm? So that can also be asked in the exam. Okay. Uh, let us see now this. I hope the screen is visible. Thank you so much for keep on responding. Venu, Sumit, all of you. Keep responding if screen is visible. And we are going to take the problem for buyback. Now in the buyback, very important are three conditions. They will not give you how many shares to do the buyback that you have to work out. And the three conditions are that buyback of the shares, whatever you do buyback, existing share capitals more than 25% you cannot do the buyback. Right or not? Okay, we will be taking this problem which is there on the screen. But more than 25% of the existing share capital, you cannot do the buyback. Okay, this, was, this is called as the uh, resource test. Right? One minute, I will show you those three tests. Then it will be very clear. Partly paid shares cannot be purchased by. There are many conditions like that for the buyback. Okay. This problem is very nice. If you are having a notepad with you, mark and keep this period limited problem illustration number 5 with 3 options and it is very important. Okay. There cannot be more than 25% of the paid up capital buyback. Right? That is the face value. And paid up capital and reserves put together cannot exceed 25% more for the market value of the buyback. Shall I repeat? Can you see? Buyback should not exceed 25% of the paid up capital now. And buyback along with the reserves should not increase more than 25% the market value of the buyback, right? And then post buyback, the debt equity ratio should be at least 2 is to 1. When you do buyback of shares, your capital is reducing. But it's a collar type position. Buyback is like a luxury. Who will do the buyback? Who has huge reserves? So they buy their own shares from the market. And they cancel it. Right or not? And then journal entries are also passed. So let me show you one problem. How to do the working. And then how to write the journal entries. Once we come to know how many shares are issued. 
can you see on screen journal entries equity share buyback account debit to bank buyback 25000 shares at 20 now when you buy back your own shares at market value 20 it has to be cancelled at face value right and reserves will be debited in the securities premium okay so first is equity share you can't say ma'am why like own debentures and all why can't we have shares no you can't buy back your own shares and hold it right so you will buy your share and cancel it immediately so buy back account debit to bank 5 lakh then capital cancel 250 remaining you have to adjust in the reserve so securities premium and all and then we have revenue reserves also whatever you do the buy back with the face value of the buy back you have to create a crr but listen if in shares then i have done buy back 5 lakh i have issued preference shares 2 lakh then crr is to be created only for 3 lakh is this clear to all of you right so now let us see how the buyback and all is done in this problem okay right it's a very nice problem and there are three kind of test you need to satisfy yeah look here this is the share test that is 25% se jyada shares buy nahi karna resource test along with the share and reserves 25% se jyada buybacks market value will not be and post buyback debt equity ratio should be 2 is to 1 okay and you know you have to create the crr look at this working it's very easy to take simple revision and teach simple problem but when we are doing this last moment revision i should definitely take these problems where i know you all are stuck up so then crr is to be created that is fine how much crr you will create uh face value of the buy back crr cannot be used for anything so crr is not a free reserve it can be used only to issue fully paid bonus shares you should note it down crr is not a free reserve it can be used only to issue fully paid bonus shares now how do i pass on these test this working is superb you can say ma'am whole study material is clear except this equation problem i have left and go and see all the past attempt exams how many times equation is asked and this is a hierarchy if you are seriously excited for your final open your study material for final buy back and this equation same problem you will find in final so there is no escape first test is share outstanding test acha when will you do all these test in the exam when it is not decided that <clears throat> um how many shares you have to do buy back if they give you buy back shares is decided then to it's very easy buy back to bank and second entry is what all um, your capital debit reserves debit to buy back so buy back is closed and then create a crr it's very easy and we all are saying that face value of buy back capital minus the face value of the preference shares issued difference you should create buy back you know why why we need to create the crr so that the capital base should not reduce otherwise existing equity shareholders may feel risky first is share outstanding test number of shares outstanding 125 25% that is 31250 is the maximum shares you can issue face value now paid up value already you have 1250 free reserves you may have free reserves don't take revaluation reserve capital reserve and statutory reserves they are not free reserves all other reserves are 1875 so 3125 is 25% that is 781 250 you can do buy back
780 once 250 we can do buy back clear now 781 250 when we do buy back why am i dividing by 20 because capital plus reserves when i take take market value when i take only capital take face value so 781 if i divide by 20 maximum shares i can buy back is 39 here i can buy back is 31 so, least of the three we can do by now. Third test. Third test is your loans. When you take loans, you take all the loans, long term, short term, current liability, all your liabilities, your debt, 45, 25. So, post buyback, your equity should be at least 20 to 62. Buyback, after buyback, your equity should be 20 to 62, 500. Right or not? And press. Working note is there. You, achha, and whenever in any chapter, please, I wanted to say as a reminder, a very important reminder, whether it is amalgamation, buyback, internal reconstruction or conversion of partnership firm in a company. When you are required to prepare a vertical balance sheet, make sure if you are rushing through time, you don't prepare all the other schedules, but at least prepare two important schedules very quickly. One is share capital. Another is reserves and surplus. Clear? Ye do to kam se kam banana hai. Now, just look at this working and tell me if it is clear or not. Suppose amount transferred to CRR is X. <clears throat> X is the face value of the buyback. You have to transfer to the CRR. Now, right now your capital, your equity is 31 to 5. Out of that, X you will transfer to CRR. And that's not a free reserve. Okay. So, this 3125 minus the X. What is X? X is what? X is the um, CRR. That is the face value of the capital you are going to do the buyback. That you will transfer to CRR. Now, this is your capital. And you want your capital to be 22, 62, 500 minimum after the buyback. So, can I say this is the maximum difference you can do buyback? Why? Why is the buyback's market value? X is the face value. Now, listen, why is the market value? So, if I divide by 20, I will get number of shares. If I multiply by 10, I will get the face value. Once again, Y is the market value. If I divide, Y is coming to 575. If I divide by 20, I will get number of shares, buyback. Into 10, I will get face value. And with face value, I have to create CRR. You know why all this googly and this equation? Because CRR is not a free reserve. So out of 31, first you remove CRR. Then from remaining capital, after the buyback, 20 to 62, you need to have 2 is to 1 ratio. Right? So, you make equation 1. And equation 2 is 2x is equal to y. Can you substitute y as 2x? You will get x and y value. x is face value of buyback. 287,500. Come here, x. I will show you where x came. 287,500. Yeah. 287,500. At least you want minimum. Yes? So then future equity shares is 283,500. Got it? And maximum buyback 575 is there. So now share test is saying 31,250. Resource is saying 39. Debt equity is saying 28. So how many shares you will do buyback? Least of the three. Okay? Are all the screen and everything clear to all of you? And buyback ke saath, 
please remember the conditions and I have not gone into lock in between two buyback one and if there are partly paid shares convert them into fully paid and then do the buyback yes pay attention this problem is asked for five marks can I issue equity shares with uh, <clears throat> different different rights yes we can issue the equity shares with different rights okay uh, little you may be confused somewhere I feel it's absolutely okay because I have taken a very tough road to explain you the toughest problem. Otherwise, all the problems of buyback are very easy. Ma'am, three journal entries and then from the opening balance sheet, three journal entries and closing. Period limited is a very nice problem. There they have three combinations of debt. So make sure you do it from this study material. WXYZ hold equity shares in the ratio 4 is to 3 is to 1 is to 2. And A, B, C, D hold preference shares in the ratio 3 is to this. As the paid up equity share capital of the company is 40 lakhs and preference shares is 20 lakhs. Equity to preference their ratio is 4 is to 2 or 2 is to 1. Then even their voting right. Can I take equity shareholders voting right? 40, 30, 10 and 20 in the ratio of 2 is to 3, 2 is to 3. 2 is to 3 ka 40%, 30, 10 and 20. This will be equity shares. 1 by 3 for preference. 1 by 3 for preference in that 30, 40, 20 and 10. When you do the total, you will get 100. This is how equity shares can be issued with differential voting right. Okay, right? So just 10 minutes more I need. I hope this is all very clear. Thank you so much for the response. And last topic we are going. Old syllabus compulsory. It is coming weightage wise. 10 marks problem with the two tables and the journal entries. So just 2 minutes I will show you that. One minute and show you the underwriting we are starting. Underwriting commission nothing given then for equity shares you have to take uh, 5% and for the uh, shares you have to take 5% and for the debentures you have to take 2%. One minute. I'll share another screen with you so that you can do later on refer the material and do it. Underwriting of the shares and debentures. Okay. When you do underwriting, uh, commission and all, nothing given in the exam. Then on the debentures, you take it 2.5%. On shares, you take it 5 point. Underwriters are the guarantors to the issue. And you know, when they give underwriting problems, if any shares are taken by the promoters, deduct it. And remaining underwriters will take in their gross liability ratio as given in the problem. Right? Now, there are some terms used here. So, let us clear it from the screen only. Marked applications are applications which have underwriters name. So, the benefit will be given to them only. And unmarked applications. <clears throat> unmarked applications, there are two options. Unmarked applications are just applications received. So you can give benefit to all the underwriters in the ratio of gross liability or in the gross liability after doing minus the marked. Right? Clear to all of you? So this is how you have to give the marked and unmarked benefit. Can you see on screen? See, in this chapter, first table is decide how much the underwriter will take the shares. Second is he has to pay you for the shares and you have to pay him commission. So, can we give them commission and all this equal, right? Okay, can we settle the payment in the second table? And third is the journal entries. So, very nice, very scoring. How to treat the firm underwriting, I will say. First, you check this. Marked and then unmarked. Listen, now you have two options. Unmarked applications. You can give the benefit to all the underwriters in 40 is to 35 is to 25. 
or you can give it in the ratio of 20, 25, 5. As they give in the exam, nothing given, you do it in the gross liability and then <clears throat> give it to the underwriters. Okay. Now you have a concept here called as firm shares. Firm shares are the shares underwriters are taking other than their uh, liability as an underwriter. Firm shares means promise 10,000, 10,000 shares we will take. So firm should also be deducted. Firm shares, you can note it down if you are having a notepad. Firm shares, the benefit is given to underwriter. If then you treat it like a marked, deduct the firm shares. If firm benefit is not given to underwriters, then make the total of the firm shares and treat it as unmarked and give it to all the underwriters in the ratio of gross life. Once again, firm benefit given to underwriters, then like marked, you deduct firm also. Firm benefit not given to underwriters. In that case, if it is not given, treat it as unmarked, add it to unmarked and unmarked plus firm, give it to all the underwriters in the ratio of their gross liability. Got it? Let us solve one problem that will make all clear. Firm underwriting are the extra shares which they take apart from the marked and unmarked. And finally, whatever is their liability, they have to bring the money for all. Okay? See, benefit of firm underwriting is given to underwriter. Treat it as... Okay, then it is not treated as unmarked. It is treated as marked. And benefit of firm underwriting is not given. Then it is treated as unmarked. Otherwise, it is treated as marked. Only one problem I will take that will make all the table very clear. Sometimes they are making left to right. You always make it vertically in the exam. And uh, let us take this example. Number 3. Okay. Just we will complete. So that I can show you all items in this. 20 lakhs equity shares are there. 5 lakhs were issued to promoters. Do pass journal entry for promoters. But underwriters have got a responsibility only for 15 lakh shares. Clear? Balance offered to public was underwritten. Equally with the firm underwriting. Right. And subscription total to 1297 including. Achha, when you are taking subscription which came as 1297 including firm. So that means these are included firm. So you have to separate firm. And now how much money has come on application and allotment? 250 and 2. Sometimes they are giving all 10 and 11 rupees. It depends. Commission they have given. Now journal entries I will read later. First table. Okay. There were 20 lakh shares. 5 lakhs are taken by promoter. Give remaining. Here it is equal. Exam it may be 60, 20, 20. So gross liability as they give, so you take less marked applications. Okay. Then less unmarked. Unmarked total will be given in the exam. Otherwise you can calculate. I will show you. And then first you have deducted marked. Then you deducted unmarked. And then you deduct the firm. Firm benefit you are giving to underwriters. Okay. If firm benefit you are not giving to underwriters, then you add it to the unmarked and give it in the gross liability ratio. But when you gave all this, you know one exam tip I am saying, in between if it is coming negative, no, let it go negative, you continue. And do the plus minus once you will save time in exam. Marked, unmarked, firm. Now Vijay should take 5 lakh but then it's coming 24, he is having extra. So, can he give extra what he has credit to others in which ratio gross liability? I am repeating it is equal in this problem. Always it will not be equal. So, now 24 you give it to them. Okay. Finally, you are getting plus minus. Now, A is getting extra. He is so satisfied. A is having 11 extra. He will give it to C. Finally, as an underwriter... A should not take any shares. B should not take any shares. And Ashok should take 
53,000 shares. Clear? Now, add to this form underwriting. Now, many students have a question here. Why we are adding the form underwriting? Okay. So, why we are adding a form underwriting here? So, the form underwriting is added here. As an underwriter, they only Ashok is taking 53. But then they all have decided to take firm shares, no? Before taking the liability. So, anyhow, A will take 50,000 shares, we will take 50. And Ashok will also take 50. Now, application and allotment money, 2 rupees and 2 rupees 50 paisa, 3 of them should pay me. Right? Okay. 225, 225, 463. But out of 450, on firm shares, 50,000, already 250 rupees they have paid in application. So at the time of allotment, how much they have to pay? They have to pay me 1 lakh, 1 lakh and 338. And I have to pay them underwriting commission. So can we adjust it? I will pay them net. And I will receive from the third person. Any doubt? First you calculate the first table correctly. Now you say how much amount is payable. If it is full value multiply it with, with 11 directly. But here it is 4 rupees 50 paisa. The amount payable. Less already paid on the firm shares. Right? This is coming because it's partly paid shares. And then balance they should pay me. And I should pay them. So always with the allotment value, you do the commission adjustment. All clear? And once you prepare working note 1 for the liability, working note 2 for the others. And last is, yeah, some exam tips and some doubts. If you have, please uh, keep putting in the chat box so that we can cover up that also. Hmm? Advanced accounting paper is I am completing these journal entries but just saying okay some tips at least five minutes we will discuss and then we will close. Once we get this bank to share application. Now you know you can say ma'am why they have not written promoters entry. Many times in the exam they are saying just write journal entries uh, related to the underwriters. Otherwise you have to write the journal entry for promoter. Then Bank to share application. Okay. This is money you have already received. No. 1,50,000 into 2.5 from all the three underwriters. Now at the time of allotment. Total capital is credited. Even securities premium can come here. And. <coughs> debit Anand Vijay and Ashok with how much they should pay me. At the time of the allotment. Ye 1 lakh 138 kahan se aega? It will come from here. Yeah. 1 lakh 1 lakh 38. After paying the application at the time of allotment. And anyhow this is the allotment entry only no. So at allotment underwriter should pay me. An application I have adjusted. And how will you get the share capital? 4 rupees 50 paisa. Pick up your calculators. 9,13,500. Divide by 4 rupees 50 paisa. Okay. So you are getting the money from these many shares. Till more should come. Okay. Now. Um, underwriters. This, these are the shares only taken by underwriters. Huh? Otherwise if you are trying to tell you ma'am. 15 lakh shares into 4.50. It will not tell you. Because you are writing the journal entries only related to underwriters. And then underwriting commission we should pay it equal to all the three. And then Anand is saying. What Anand is saying? Anand is saying I should pay you 1 lakh. You should pay me 250. Better you only pay me 150. Okay Anand we will pay you 150. Vijay we will pay you. And we will receive the money. Any doubt in the underwriting concept anywhere, anything? Yeah, let me know. Ask please all the concepts are clear or not for the partnership, for the underwriting, for the ESOP, for the buyback. 
I tried my best. It's actually very difficult to cover up everything in a gist way like this because there is so much variety of problems. You have partial underwriting also. Huh? So there are many concepts in this underwriting. Practice the problems given in the ICS material in writing. Any doubt you have in the comment box. Later on also if you are watching the video you can put an advanced accounting paper is easy because students are not doing ICS material your banking your internal reconstruction this underwriting many times questions are picked up and asked as it is so make sure you do the study material go through it and keep noting down some concept firm benefit given treat it as mark firm benefit not given treat it as a keep on noting one day before the exam, revise all the concepts. Don't dive into any material, manual, mock test, RTP till you have first revised all the concepts and then you can check some of the marked problem which are very important. Like I said, period limited. In ESOP, I said choice limited problem which is very important. So keep on checking all this. Thank you so much for being with me throughout this live. And wish you very all the best to each one of you. It takes a lot of energy I am telling you to go on like this for us. And that to all mixed up for me, for you to sit and attend with me. But that's what is toiling and patience. And CA teachers and CA students are known for that. So work very hard to get this degree. I have it from last 20 years. I can't say there's no saturation. Still the heads are turning when you say you are a chartered accountant. You need to have the degree, exam oriented knowledge, practical knowledge and an expertise in one field to go through this. Wish you very all the best and we are closing the session. Any doubt you have, you are always welcome to comment below this video. After the recording also, I will check it and answer it if you have some doubt.